Hello friends and welcome back to the Heavenly Homestead. It is the evening time and I wanted to share with you a little bit of my nighttime routine after, I mean, before we all go to bed or at least I get out of the barn. <laughs> so I'm gonna show you a little bit of my routine but my routines are always kind of different compared to other goats. I'm keeping an eye on a mom that is feeding her babies. Come here. Come for your sister. Okay. You got it. Let your, let your sister eat. I know. This isn't that yummy? I know. I'm sorry I have to wake you up. So last minute I let them figure out whoever is really hungry then we'll fight for a teat. But they've had a lot of milk. She's been here for a while so as soon as she's over it I'm gonna take them all to bed and then move on to the next go. That's Gaia. Her kids are really big right now and they do know how to get to the teat. But I always like to make sure that they eat right before we go to bed. And that way I don't have to worry too much about it during the night time. Because the kids get kind of sleepy by 6 p.m. And then if it's anything like the babies that I keep inside, the bottle babies, then they don't probably nurse throughout the night. So. Doing this for the moms, they, they would still get the grain otherwise. They just wouldn't get it by themselves. And in exchange to be good mothers and let them eat as much as they want. <laughs> she kind of squats and lets them. But they are so rough. <laughs> So you can see the little girl, the black one is a little girl, and she, look, milk is dripping, <laughs> and she's still bumping her mom to make sure that she gets extra milk. And again, I just let them as much as they, you know, the mom would stay, and it's, you know, about the same amount of grain I would give her anyways. And yes, this makes the routine kind of long, the nighttime routine. But it makes me feel better to go to bed knowing that they had a really good dinner. Um, and the moms are gonna rest a little bit more now. 
<laughs> that girl is falling. Let me help her. And so at the same time, it's good for the mom. So she can rest too. Kind of teaches them that the milk stand is a good thing for first fresheners. They're looking forward to being here. The kids are too. And the first time that they get in here, uh, it's like, oh, what, what are we supposed to do? But once they realize that their mom is there and she's not moving and they can drink as much as they want, that is a life-changing moment for this little goats. Clara is really upset. She was putting her head against the screen. Like, what about me? You're coming, but you're not the queen who needs to tell me what to do and at what time I need to do it. Oh, look, she's upset. You don't, you're not the boss of me. I know you now you're talking to me as if I was one of your kids. I'm not. I love you though. You're coming. Hey Gaia, let's go. Come on. She's like, where's my grain? No, get out. Get out. You're so naughty. Ay, oh, Clarita. You're gonna have to wait now, your turn. Now, this one on this side is a big boy and he eats a lot. So what I usually do is, if there's three of them, I'm on top of it. I check who started, who goes after, and all that. As you can see, that little black boy, he is by Clarita. He's, he has his tongue over there. And so they take turns, but I will take the big boy out in a few minutes. I'm gonna get him now. I know. Nice. Okay. You don't have to fight. Get this one. Because I'm trying to feed the little babies more than the big babies. And this big baby, uh, his mom loves him a lot. And he, she feeds him a lot. She doesn't feed as much the little ones. I mean, she'll, she'll be there for them. But she's not as patient with them because it takes him a minute. So I, I grab the big one in my arms and I keep him in my arms, in my lap, while the little ones get their fair share. And again, they get super full. And then I move on to the big one again. But trust me, he's not starving. And Clara would inhale that grain in 2.3 seconds if I didn't do it little by little. So that's why you see me go and put handfuls. Okay, you're done. Go, go outside, go. No, there's no more. You're done, you're done. We're going outside. Okay, so this is Briere. She has two boys, this black one with the little white tail. So if you if you see the white tail, then you know that's Bree's boy. And then Dom Jr. is on this side. And I call him Dom Jr. because his dad's name is Dom. Well, no, that's not his name. That's his foreign name. So he, he looks just like his dad. This boys will eat until the end of time if she allows them. So I'm gonna give her grain and I'm gonna be patient so they can have as much as they want. Right now she doesn't have grain. She's just being a good mom. She's chewing the cud and being a good mom. So I wanna encourage that behavior. And yeah, it kind of gets repetitive. But you only get, well, I only get to enjoy these kids for eight to 12 weeks and then they're gone. And then life gets back to our routine where the girls, you know, it's kind of simple. And so for the eight to 12 weeks that the kids are here, I, <laughs> I try to do things maybe that 
are not as conventional, but at least they are very efficient for what I am trying to achieve, even though it takes quite a while. I always think, well, it's taking me two hours to do my nighttime routine, but you know, I can go to bed thinking that they're all well fed, with full bellies, they're gonna be warm, sleeping in a bunch of kids, and the moms are gonna rest at night because they really, at this point, they're not eating at night. Come on, Bria. There you go. Now I'm gonna go get your kids. When they won't stand for the kids because they want more grain, I don't give it to them. I let her throw her tantrum and just wait it out until she'll calm down and then I'll put the kids back with her. And we know. Now with every time a dough, uh, every time that she wants grain, she sits down and you give them grain, then they learn that behavior. So. I make her feed the babies, let her know that she still needs to do it, and then give her more grain. I have no problem giving her grain. I just don't want her to think that she can tell me when I should give her grain. So, as she's standing, I add more. And, you know, she does have her portion. She needs to have of grain every day, enough alpha pellets and our mix but I don't like to I don't like them when they tell me what I need to be doing so I don't let them I put this gate at the door so it's the best thing ever so I don't have to really um, open the door because it opens to the outside so I don't really have to wrestle the goats every time I go in or out. So that little gate, I'm gonna show it to you. That little gate is the best thing in the world. Keeps everyone out. And then when I want to go in, I just push that open to the outside and that's it. If I had to do the door, then that would be a problem. Mocha. Come on. Go. I think he's a first freshener. And if you're new to the channel, look, he's like, Do you have a teeth? <laughs> She does, but she doesn't have milk. So Athene is going to be a first freshener. She is pregnant and she is really a sweet dough and the bottom of the barrel kind of situation, which means that she gets bullied out of food more than any other doughs that we have here. Even our little weather toad is not as bullied as she is. Um, her mom, Clara, she recently gave birth and she feels, Athene feels very lonely. She's been extra sad since Clara gave birth because Clara is really not liking her anymore. And she used to be with her mom 24-7. She was protected by mom 24-7. And now mom wants the little kids and she doesn't want her. So I'm gonna show you from behind. Now, Athene has the cutest, <laughs> First freshener udder coming in. She's still, she's not filling in. She just, I shaved her because I was curious because her teeth look <laughs> longer than the twins did at this stage. She is about eight weeks away from kidding. So I just, you know, I'm not expecting her to be filling in just yet usually happens six weeks before they start uh, well before their kidding date so she is a beautiful doe and she is very sweet 
What do you want? Girlfriend? She's a very sweet doe. She's very mellow. She has the same, same uh, personality as her dad, who I love with the passion. And, you know, if you met Rocky, um, you know that she is, you know, her daddy's uh, girl. And because of that, they cry they are very softly. They, you know, they have this very sweet and mellow personality. And sometimes that means that others will take advantage of that but she is starting to show a little bit let me see if I can show you from the top but she is starting to be a little bit more rounded um, so hopefully there's gonna be more than one kid in there not because I want lots of them here is falling funny on the side but not because I want a lot of kids from her but because I don't want a big single buckling to make it hard for her as a first time mom. So, I'm gonna wait for her to be done and then she's gonna go back with everyone else and she won't be bullied out of the most important part. And remember by the six week mark, she's gonna need a lot more carbs than what she's eating right now. And that is because the babies are gonna need more of that sugar, so it's important that I keep on top of her food intake just to make sure that she has healthy babies. Right, Mama? Right. Now everyone's gonna go to bed, including you, little girl. Look at her, how beautiful she is. She has a black line over there, which I don't know what, that, what that's called, but she is a beautiful chocolate in the back. Can you see it? <laughs> Then she has the brown, but she has the black legs, frosted ears, and I just absolutely love her pattern, her color. Can you see it there? She has like a lot of black on this side, a little bit on this one, and then she's a chocolate, which eh, I think I need a keeper. She's my husband's favorite too, with Clarita. Clarita's also his favorite.